The sole purpose of this video is to provide a basic overview and orientation of your new apparatus. This video is not intended to act as or replace individualized driver operator training. Individual fire departments may base guidelines, policies, and procedures tailored for best practices. Pierce Manufacturing and Hughes Fire Equipment representatives are not liable for injuries caused from acts resulting from actions inconsistent with the information provided within this video and or accompanying manuals. Refer to the Operation and Maintenance Manual for complete details relating to the components and features of this apparatus. Only trained personnel should operate this vehicle or perform maintenance. You are responsible for learning how to operate this fire apparatus under all conditions without having to refer to the manual while operating at an emergency incident. This video will discuss types of warnings and caution labels. It is your responsibility to locate and identify each of the labels and understand the importance and associated hazards. Warning labels will point out procedure that must be taken or action that must be avoided to guard against the possibility of serious injury or death. Caution labels will advise you that there is a risk of damage to property if certain precautions are not followed. Continuous training, reviewing of operation and service manuals, developing good standardized practices will assist driver operators with a more complete understanding of the components and operation of this fire apparatus. As the driver operator of this vehicle, you are responsible for understanding the function of each component of the apparatus, maintaining control of the fire apparatus at all times while in operation, make operational and functional changes while operating at an emergency without having to read operator's instructions or safety warning labels, operate manual override and emergency shutdown procedures immediately if a component fails to operate properly. Components location may vary with each Pierce Fire Apparatus. Review the exact location of each component prior to operation. Major inconsistencies between your vehicle and the information contained in this video should be directed to your sales representative. Safe operation of any vehicle is the responsibility of the driver operator. You must learn the location and function of all controls, switches, gauges, valves, inlets, and discharges. Due to a higher center of gravity, heavy trucks have a significantly higher rollover tendency than other types of vehicles. To reduce the risk of rollover, avoid making sharp turns, excessive speed, and avoid abrupt maneuvers. In the event of a rollover crash, an unbelted person is significantly more likely to become injured or die than a person wearing a seatbelt. In the event of a crash, unbuckled occupants can also become a hazard to other occupants as they may be thrown around inside the cab. Seatbelts are required while in operation. Please refer to your warranty certificates for details and information enclosed in your manuals. Customer installed equipment must be mounted to withstand road travel and comply with NFPA 1901. Modifications such as drilling holes or welding to structural frame components of the chassis are not permitted. Contact Pierce for instruction and review of non-structural sheet metal or other dissimilar metals for modification. Follow the radio installation guide for further assistance on installing or mounting electronics. Before placing your new apparatus into service, Perform a primary inspection of key components of the apparatus, including all fluid levels, anti-lock braking systems, electronic stability control, and automatic traction control. Weigh your apparatus to ensure that it conforms to axle and brake ratings. Never exceed the gross axle rating printed on the label inside the cab. Exceeding these ratings could lead to reduced component life, personal injury, or death. Review the use of auxiliary braking systems, compression brake, exhaust brake, electronic retarder, and hydraulic retarder. Before placing the apparatus in service, refer to the operational maintenance manuals. 
information on the operation and maintenance functions for the components such as the pump, pressure governor, and foam systems along with other options is provided in either the Pierce manuals and or other manufacturer support information delivered with the apparatus. If you need more information, please contact Hughes Fire Equipment. Congratulations, State of Oregon, on your new fire apparatus, job number 31712. Please utilize this five-digit job number when referencing your apparatus with Hughes Fire Equipment and Pierce Manufacturing. We'll get started on a brief orientation of your new apparatus. Let's start down under the front bumper where you'll find two open-ended tow hooks on the passenger and driver's side. Moving up onto the bumper face, onto the driver's side is where you'll find your electronic siren and PA speaker. Moving up onto the bumper extension, you'll find an inch and a half swivel discharge. Located directly in the center, you'll find your hose storage location. Moving up onto the grill, you'll find emergency warning lights. And then moving over to the driver and passenger side, your headlight structure containing your turn marker. Moving up onto the side of the body, you'll find emergency warning lights. Moving up to the very center above the Freightliner logo, you'll find your grab handle for tilting the hood. Here's a close-up of the tow hooks just under the front bumper. As we move to the right side in this image, you'll find the Whelan siren and PA speaker system. These are the emergency lights located with inside the grill mounted on the face. Your front bumper swivel inch and a half discharge located in the center, your tubbed storage location with Velcro securing straps. Let's move around to the side where we'll find your headlight structure, low and high beam, and also a turn indicator located within that area. Moving up onto the top, you're going to find a side-facing emergency warning light. On the side of the fender is where you'll find your turn marker indicator directly above the tire. Moving further up, you'll find the air intake for your engine. And then just slightly to the back, you'll find the release mechanism strap. This allows you to release both right and left side, allow you to tilt the hood to check for engine maintenance. Here's an image of the Alcoa wheel and Michelin tires. Let's move further back here to the step area where you'll find your ultra low sulfur diesel fuel only. It is the silver cap. Just to the right of it, you'll find the blue cap, which is your DEF tank. As we now move uh, to the cab itself, you'll find perimeter lighting below the step and also in the step area below the cab. Grab handled keyed entry door locks. You also have grab handles on the right hand side of the rear section of the cab. In addition with two mirrors, one being a flat mirror, the lower section being a convexed mirror. Let's move inside the cab now. First, at all points of entry for personnel, you'll find a few warning, caution, and danger labels located on the left-hand side of the door. You'll also find grab handles for ease of entry and exiting for firefighter safety. Just inside on the seat area, you'll find comfort controls. This is an air ride seat, so this is the adjustment for it. And then also, not in this image, but just below that, you'll find the master battery switch, which is located here. This is a quarter turn on and off switch. Located just under the seat area on the side, you'll find this placard manufactured by Pierce Manufacturing for the state of Oregon. It has the job number, five digit number, the date of manufacture, gross vehicle weight ratings, cold tire inflation. It also has information here regarding the types of fluid and the location and also the fluid amount. If you have any questions as regard to your apparatus, most information can be found on this placard. Let's now move upward to the door section area. This is the hinged area of the door. We will find the start stop key. This is a keyed ignition. Moving up, you'll find comfort controls along with your speed control. Just beneath that, the set, excel, or coast on the cruise control. Uh, beneath that, you'll find your headlight on and off switches, and then also your parking lights. Beneath that, you'll find cruise control increase or decrease. Let's now move to the dash cluster. On the left, you're going to find your transmission at the lower section, water temperature, voltage. Moving to the right, you'll find your ultra low sulfur diesel, air for the front and rear, speedometer and tachometer, and informational display above and below the speedometer.
In the upper left hand corner in this image you'll find your traction control switch. Moving to the right you're going to find your filter minder. This is the air intake filter. And then just beneath that you'll find your Allison transmission pad. Moving to the right in the center section we're going to find informational diagnostic information. These are indicator lamps with information written on that lamp that illuminates. To the right you'll find your pull to apply your system parking brake. There's also a note here regarding your pump shift which is just to the right of that. Uh, this is going to be the uh, information regarding engaging your pump. To the right you'll also find your high idle and also informational diagnostic information on a digital readout to the right. Beneath that you'll find your DPF regen information. You'll also find the switch next to it which is engaging the axles between the two axles to lock them. And then you'll also find additional information regarding mirror heat. Your pier seatbelt information is also located in the upper right hand corner. This is going to indicate green indicating someone is in the seat and belted, red indicating they're in the seat and not belted. Beneath that you'll find your climate control. Just down at the lower section you'll find cup holders, 12 volt barrel style access and also your door locks. Moving up onto the top of the dash is where you'll find the monitoring system for your backup camera. Located between the seats, driver and passenger is where you'll find additional storage for cab resources. Let's take a quick look up to the very top section here, just a glimpse of the overhead section over the driver and passenger area. Let's first take a look at the driver's side. You'll find your emergency master switch, lower and upper zone warning lights. You have some future switches and then also your siren select for horn or siren. Moving to the right, you'll find your scene lights for rear scene, left scene, and right scene, future switches, and then also your PA system and siren control module. Let's move back outside to the actual body of the vehicle. We'll start at the very top section of the pump panel. Um, this is where you're going to find your cross loads. Uh, these cross lays have two, number one and number two, and then you also have a dead lay, meaning that there is no hose connected to the pump. Just below the cross lays is where you'll find the pump discharge. This is your master pump discharge gauge. Just beneath that you'll find the pump intake and this is the master pump intake gauge. Moving just to the right you'll find your test ports for vacuum and pressure. They are currently plugged. Moving up from that location you'll find the blue module which is your water tank level indicator. Moving up you'll find a set of rocker switches. First being your panel lights and then you have several future switches if necessary. Let's cover the pump boss. If the uh, illumination of the amber light is lit, it's indicating the check engine in the upper left hand corner. Located in the center, you'll find a digital readout for the RPMs and pressure. Moving to the right, you'll find the stop. If illuminating, it would be in red. This is the stop engine light. Moving down, you'll find the blue menu button, which allows you to scroll through the various menu functions of your pump boss. You'll also find helpful information here regarding diagnostic information for your engine. To the right you'll find the silence button for the audible alarm that's in red. Down in the lower section the two yellow buttons you have an option of uh, selecting either pressure or throttle mode. In the center you'll find a digital readout. Moving to the right if you've properly engaged your pump you'll find throttle ready indicator. That is a green indicator light. Just beneath it you'll find a green preset light. This will allow you to program preset lights for operating within your pump boss module. Just beneath that you'll find the throttle indicator and also a push for idle. Just beneath that you'll find two modules here. First on the left hand side this is an audible alarm. The outer bezel will allow you to dampen the sound. And then to the right if you've engaged your pump properly you'll find the pump engaged indicator illuminating. To the left you'll find the cross lay for number one which is color coded in yellow and also the number two which is color coded in the white color. Moving to the right you'll find the number one driver side discharge. This is a two and a half inch discharge. And then you'll find in the lower section the front discharge which is an inch and a half swivel on the bumper. Moving next you'll find the number two passenger side. This is a two and a half inch discharge. And just beneath that you'll find your large diameter passenger side discharge in the color green. In the upper right corner this is the tank fill and recirculating line. And just beneath that you'll find the tank to pump. Let's move further down now just to the left and down to the next module where you'll find a few items. We'll start in the upper left hand corner first starting with the recirculating. This is your engine cooler. Um, this is a twist not a pull. 
Moving to the right, you're going to find your pump, fire pump primer. And there are instructions here on the right hand side regarding priming instructions that you should have your engine running at at least 1000 RPMs while engaging the priming system. Down to the next section, you'll find the number one driver's side discharge. This is a two and a half inch discharge. And then moving to the right, you'll find your large diameter pump intake. Just to the right of that, you'll find this placard regarding your test pressures for 150, 200, and 250 PSI. Located also in the bracketed areas, you'll find the associated GPM and also the RPMs associated with those test pressures. Just behind the gray cover located in the next section down is where you'll find your uh, plug-in for your shore power. This is a 20 amp shore power which will maintain your batteries. Moving to the right, you'll find an air inlet. Also on your left hand side, you have a hail pump. This is the information regarding that hail pump that you have installed in your vehicle. There's also a two and a half inch inlet. This is a female inlet with a ball valve on the very top. Just beneath that, you'll find your pump drain. This is the master pump drain for your pump. To the right, you're gonna find a few warning labels here. One, pressurized caps and the associated hazards while removing a cap. And then also only trained personnel should operate this piece of equipment. Underneath the diamond plate of the sideboard, you're gonna find the number one driver's side discharge and also the driver's side auxiliary inlet, which is that two and a half inch. As we move now to the section where the tank is located in the upper left-hand corner, you're gonna find a LED indicator regarding the amount of water in your tank. You'll also find forward and rear side facing floodlights, and you'll also find your emergency warning lights located between the wheels and in the upper right-hand corner in this image. There's also a marker turn indicator located just in front of the wheels. Located between the two wheels is where you'll find bottle storage for SCBA bottles. Here are the compartments in the open position. Let's take a look on the left-hand side. First, inside this compartment, when plugged into shore power, this device, which is your battery charging system, will activate. Let's move now to the very top section, couple close-ups. This is the tank level indicator and also a side-facing floodlight. Turn marker. As we move between the two wheels is where you'll find bottle storage location and also just beneath that bottle storage location you'll find the midpoint for your emergency warning light. Let's move to the very back section. LED marker light at the very top, emergency warning light, and a side facing flood. Let's move to the rear section of the apparatus where you'll find at the lower section emergency warning lights. Moving up from that you'll find your cluster which houses the turn indicator, brake, emergency light, and then also a backup light. There are two rear tow hooks located in the very back which are closed attached to the frame rail. And as we move up, there are two outer compartments here that access from the rear. These are for your hard suction hose. There are two warning labels here also regarding advising you not ride on the back of the apparatus. And there's also a fall protection also. At the very top, you're going to find rear facing floodlights located in the very rear center in the, or I should say in the back in the center is where you located your backup camera. As we move underneath the apparatus, you'll find perimeter lighting to the rear. You'll also find your running lights located within the tailboard section. Close up here of the emergency lights, brake light, turn, and backup light. As we move forward, this is going to be your hose bed lights. This activates the light that's located in the hose bed, which we'll show you in just a few minutes. Close up here of the tow hooks to the very rear. As we move to the right and left side, you'll find that hose storage location for your rigid drafting tubes. This vehicle also is equipped with the dump valve. Let's take a quick look at that. At the very top, the red handle is going to be the locking mechanism and the right handle is the actual release. Moving down lower, if you choose to swivel the chute out, you do have the ability to do that. This is the release mechanism for allowing you to release the swivel. There are also release mechanism which allow you to extend the chute out further away from the side of the truck. There's also a two and a half inch direct fill. That's the location that we just pointed out there. As we move up on top of the vehicle, you'll find this yellow stripe indicating the walking area and also the edge for firefighter safety. You do have a water tank access at the very top and also the work light located at the very top section. We're now to the passenger side of the vehicle. Let's take a look at some of the items from this area. They do mirror the driver's side, but there are a few uh, differences. 
First, let's start with this one. This is your water tank folding tank located on the exterior side of the truck. There's also the exhaust on this side of the vehicle. And uh, be cautious, this is what this warning label is for regarding extremely hot diesel exhaust temperatures. Here's the roll-up doors in the open position. You see there's an adjustable shelf in the forward compartment. You do have mud flaps to the rear and also Alcoa wheels, which are aluminum in the rear section here. Just above, you'll find the side-facing emergency warning light and then also SCBA bottle storage location. In the rear section, you'll find an emergency warning light, side-facing scene lights, and also a marker light in the upper corner. This is that exhaust uh, warning that I was giving you earlier uh, regarding extremely hot exhaust temperatures. Be cautious as to where you park your vehicle. Let's take a look with the uh, tank in the downward position. As we move through the next set of images, similar to the opposite side, you'll find the tank LED indicator and also a side facing scene light. As we move to the cab or midship area, let's talk about some of the items within this area. First, starting at the very top, this is a lift and turn handle. Simply lift and turn the handle to gain access behind the pan door where you'll find a push on and off white light and then also access behind the pump panel. As we move further forward uh, of that pan handle, you'll find the powered equipment rack. Um, this is a danger indication here regarding uh, the movement of that powered equipment rack. There's also raise instructions and lowering instructions on this placard, in addition with a master switch indicating with a green light once it's been activated. And then to the right, you have the lift for up or down. Let's move down now on the side of the pump panel, identify some of the other items. First, you have two discharges on this side, the large diameter, which is the green, and then also a two and a half inch uh, on this side also. You'll also find in the next section down, the large chrome cap. This is your large diameter pump intake. And then just beneath that, you'll find all your associated discharged drains that are color coded and also labeled. As we move back to the crosslay section, you'll find the two crosslays and also the deadlay. Moving just under the cab door, you'll find entrance cab lights. Uh, these are the step lights that are at the top and also the bottom for firefighter safety accessing those steps. As we move underneath, you'll find that perimeter light that I just mentioned. And then I don't think you can see it in this image, but just above that, you'll also find a step light. As we move inside the cab on the passenger side, lower right hand side, you'll find your electronic siren. This is a foot pedal for that. As we move overhead, you'll also find storage locations and then access to the center for the PA system and also the siren control. Underneath the fixed seat on the dry our passenger side is where you'll find your glove box. And then we'll move now to the front wheels, Michelin tires, and also um, Alcoa rims. Moving forward directly over the front tire is where you're going to find the turn indicator, headlight structure, and emergency light. Congratulations, State of Oregon Department of Public Safety Training Division on your new fire apparatus, job number 31712. If you have any questions regarding your vehicle, please contact your Hughes Fire Sales Representative. Thank you and congratulations.